why don't you come to my house? And I will give you what we eat. And I'll play some Indian music in the background, you know, while you're eating. <laughs> so give you that Indian atmosphere. Then I'll take you to the mosque. And you'll watch the Muslim at prayer. And perhaps that will give you an idea of the Indians in Durban, your, your visitors. She says, did that is a very good idea. But I'll have to confirm it with my wife. You know, the Westerner, he can't do anything without consulting his wife. He says, quite all right. Quite all right. Next morning, he calls me again. He says, D that. My wife is agreeable. So we made an appointment. This is 8 o'clock or a certain time like that. I said, you come along to this place in Queen Street, Durban, in the center of the town, and I'll be waiting for you. So he came, Mr. and Mrs. Beer, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Daniels of a manufacturing firm in Durban, and this couple from the Argentina, six. Three pairs, husband and wife, husband and wife, husband and wife. So I welcomed them, took them home, and we sat down to eat. And little chat, chat said, this, sir, is the unleavened bread of the Jews. Our roti, unleavened bread. Unleavened means without yeast. Unleavened bread of the Jews. And they enjoyed the food. As soon as we finished eating, I was about, about 200 meters away from the Juma Masjid the largest mos mosque in the southern hemisphere, my residence. So we could hear the azan, the isha. So I'm, we are listening to the azan, the mosque. I said, you hear somebody calling, sir? He said, yes. You know what he's saying? He says, no. Allah is the greatest. Allah is the greatest. I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship besides Allah. I bear witness that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the messenger of Allah. Come to Salah. Come to success. Allah. I said, if you accept these two fundamentals, that there is but one God, and Muhammad is his messenger, what is the message? So, Hayya ala salat, he says, come to prayer. Hayya ala salat, he says, come to prayer. Hayya ala falah, he says, come to success, because this is real success. If you want to be successful, there is no other way. That you hearken to the commandments of God, and be charitable to your fellow human beings. Then he winds up the call by saying, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allah is still the greatest, Allah is still the greatest. Whether you come or you don't come, you will not going to lower him in his exaltation, in his majesty, in his glory, he still remains supreme. And the final words of warning, 
the muazzin gives is la ilaha illallah there, there is no other object of worship but allah you can keep on worshiping your man gods your women gods your money gods but remember this that the only one who deserves to be worshiped is him this is the national anthem of the muslims wherever they live and when a muslim hears it he can hearken to the call he does not have to ask who is ringing the bell is an rc or a drc in my country it means rc means roman catholic and drc means the dutch reformed church you don't have to ask who is ringing the bell you hearken to the call and you respond and the azan also got finished side by side with my explanation the azan concluded so i'm suggesting mr beer if you like we can go down and watch the muslim at prayer i had already offered him that he said will we be allowed to do that i said yes sir You know, my people are very happy, and Allah. My people in South Africa, when we get visitors, we are very happy. There are some countries in the Muslim world they don't allow visitors. You know, keep them out. Hey, they can see through the window. Look, no, no. There are Muslims, you know, who are doing that kind of thing, treatment. When our Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that Christian deputation from Najran, he accommodated them in the Masjid al-Nabawi, in the Masjid of the Prophet. Three days and three nights, they slept there, they ate there, and they had a dialogue for three days and three nights. And when Sunday happened to come by during this period, he offered the masjid the Nabawi for the Christians to offer the prayers. This is how tolerant he was. But we won't allow the non-Muslim to come near the house of Allah. There are people. The best place, the best place for talking about Islam is the masjid. Open your masjids, man. Let them come. have them seated at the back let them watch and when they watch the muslim at prayer and they go into the sujood you don't know what happens to them the impact that that sujood has upon the people they see nothing there no idols no images no pictures nothing in the man falling down to the ground i'll tell you something more i'll tell you about this so i said no no you'll be allowed so i take them all six of them to the masjid please take off your shoes here is a type of inconvenience but this is well they see something nice and funny this is a general impression in the masjid they don't know what the masjid is what the mosque is they don't know the difference between a mosque and a temple <laughs> generally they don't know we think we assume that they know everything they know nothing please take off your shoes they start taking off the shoes so i said you know why you take off your shoes sir he says no i said you remember when moses was on mount sinai god spoke to him and he said Draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place where thou standest is holy ground. I say, in respect of that commandment, we Muslims we take off our shoes. Before we go in for prayer, we make ablution, wudu. All the exposed parts of the body are being washed: the hands, the feet, the nostrils, the nape of the neck, gargling the mouth, brushing the teeth. I say, this the Muslim does five times a day, every day of the year. the one who's particular with his prayers and purely from the hygienic point of view no one is going to find fault with the person who washes himself five times a day it's a good hygienic practice and everybody agrees it's a good hygienic practice secondly it serves certain psychological purposes we are washing not because we are dirty we just had a shower this morning no we are washing because we're going to meet our lord we're going to stand before him so mentally it's preparing us for prayer and thirdly this is also another commandment given by god almighty to the holy prophet moses in the book of exodus that is the second book of the bible it says and moses and aaron and their sons washed their hands and their feet there at when they went into the tent of the congregation they washed as the lord commanded moses so we muslims are still fulfilling another biblical commandment though we haven't got the label of a jew nor yet that of a christian yet in all humility we claim that we are more jewish than the jews and more christians than the christians in the house of prayer sit down sir right at the back had them seated and the salat takes place and we see going to different postures allahu akbar so what is what is all these you people doing mm, allah i said no this is to signify that we divorce ourselves from earth, all earthly things and we will solely contemplate on god so saying we read chapters and verses from the holy quran celebrating the praises of god and we go into different postures and in every posture we celebrate his praises in the ruku what you say subhana rabbil azim subhana rabbil azim subhana rabbil azim glory to god the great glory to god the great glory to god from there we are rising samiyallahu liman hamida allah listens to the one that praises him 
him. We have the assurance that our Lord and cherisher, our creator, who is closer to us than our jugular veins, as the Holy Quran testifies, it says, We are indeed closer to you than your very life veins. If he is that close to us, then we do not have to shout on the top of our voices when we get deaf God to hear because he listens to our secret thoughts, our feelings, our emotions. And with that assurance, we arise. Amin Allahu liman hamida. And from this position, it's Allahu Akbar. And we go into the sujood. And they see the people going into the sujood. That is the funniest thing that the Westerner sees in the mosque. Funniest. To them it's funny. Silly. Putting the heads down, putting the bumps up. <laughs> he said, what a way to pray. <laughs> no, no, it goes. The thoughts, if you were not Muslim, the same thoughts will go through your mind. What is this guy doing? Huh? Putting the head down, putting the bumps up. This is a way to pray. No, this is human mind. The human mind works that way, brothers, sisters. That's how it works. So when the guy goes, anybody goes into the studio, they say, you see, sir, that is how Jesus prayed. To these people, I said, this is how all the prophets prayed. All, I said, all. I said, it sounds like a sweeping generalization. But it is not so. If you have been reading your own holy scriptures, you will be able to confirm what I'm going to quote you now. And I'll quote you from your own book. It says, and Abraham fell on his face and prayed to God. And again, and Moses and Aaron fell on their faces and prayed to God. And again, and Joshua fell on his face and prayed to God. When we come to the New Testament, we read that towards his last days on earth, Jesus Christ, he went there, he went to the Garden of Gethsemane with his disciples, and he said, wait and watch, look out, be careful, be on guard. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed to God. And we are asking, how does a man fall on his face and pray? Can a circus acrobat do any better than that? No, no, when you say, how does a man, and Abraham, and Moses, and Aaron, and Joshua, and Jesus, and Muhammad, they all fell on their faces and prayed. How does a man fall on his face and pray, except the way we Muslims do? Man, you can teach the guy without creating offense. We have a saying, okay, you can kill the snake without breaking the stick. You can teach without creating offense. Mm, fascinated, fascinated. The salat they witness and they come back home. We sit down for tea and some samosas. Now, I start with them, again, with my boss. I said, excuse me, sir, have you seen the Quran? He says, no, do that. So would like to have a look at it, sir? He said, have you got an English translation? I said, yes, sir. He says, no, I don't mind. So I had this same Quran, but in three volumes. Originally published in India, Pakistan, cheap paper, so it had become very bulky, so I had to make it in three volumes. Ten, ten, ten separas. We call it separas, juice. So I took this Quran out. Between one couple, I gave one volume. Between the second couple, I gave another volume. And to my boss, I gave him the last volume. It has an index. So I deliberately gave him the last volume. So they all started opening, seeing inside. What's, what does it look like? What's, so I'm suggesting to my boss, said, excuse me, sir. You see at the ba back of that volume you have, there's an index. Look up the subject Moses. So he opened the index. Moses, Moses. There are <laughs> dozens of references about Moses. Everything that you want to know, man, in the index. Jesus. Everything about Jesus. What do you want to know? In this Quran, everything on your fingertips. So he found Moses. I said, sir, if you want to check up actually what it says, you know, these are the headings. Have a look, see what it says. So he opened somewhere, he opened somewhere else. Then he looks at me. He says, D that, this book is very funny. <laughs> so what's funny about it, sir? What's funny about it, sir? He said, no, you see, this book seems to be speaking in our favor. But you people are all against us, you Muslims. <laughs> we must look for opportunities. We must create opportunities. Somehow get, deliver the message, man. Deliver the message. No man who the person is. I have delivered lectures in synagogues. I have delivered lectures in churches. I have delivered lectures in Hindu temples. Allah. 
Look, our Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam around the Kaaba. All those idols were there and he used to preach. Why shouldn't we? Opportunity. The guy calls you to a church. Go and talk, man. Temple, synagogue, go and talk. Deliver the message. The best you can. In the concept of the divinity. Concept of God. The Jew says, God Almighty is absolutely unique. He has no partners. He has no sons. God is not seen at any time. No man can see God and live. And we give our hand of acceptance to the Jew that we believe as you believe. The Jew says, no eating of the flesh of swine. We say, we won't eat it. He says, no eating of blood. We say, we won't touch it. He says, circumcision. We say, we are circumcised. What more do you want? No, no. What more do you want, man? <laughs> I would say that Islam is Judaism made universal. It's the same religion on a universal level. We accept all the Jewish prophets as our prophets and all the heroes as our heroes. I'm not talking about the modern ones. With them we are at war. <laughs> we accept all the Jewish prophets as our prophets. The only problem is they won't accept one of ours. That is the irony. We accept all the prophets. <laughs> and Allah tells us in the Quran that he's given us a deen confirming what is already with you. Nothing new, man. Nothing new. It's the same religion, universal level. You have to use psychology. You have to learn now techniques, how to get under his skin, how to talk to him. You have to learn, my dear brothers and sisters. You have to learn how to talk. A frontal fight, no hope. No hope. <laughs> you can't outgun the fellow and you can't uh, out ungrenade the fellow, you can't do anything. But intellectually, you can do the job. Allah tells us in the Holy Quran that is given you a deen. So, who will the Arsala Rasula who bil Huda? He it is hence has sent his messenger with guidance, with deen al haq and with the religion of truth, leave the hero who will deen a kulli, that it may prevail, overcome, and supersede every other deen. Now mind how the mushrik might not like it. And he repeats the same formula again. And he ends by saying, Wakafa billahi shahida. And enough is Allah is a witness to this fact that he's going to make his deen to prevail with you or without you. You don't do the job. He says, Yes, tabdil qawman ghayrakum. He'll substitute in your place another people. Thumma la yakum wa msalakum. Then they won't be like you. You can do the job. But now you have to learn to talk. Look, with your tongue and with the intellect, you can knock him over, you can bowl him over, and he's a ready market. The American is the fittest guy to receive the message. I'm telling you. Talk to him, man. Humble yourself. Talk to him. He'll be amused. He's disarmed. In the way, you little pygmies, all of you, forgive me. <laughs> you Bangladeshi and you Hindi and you... Uh, in Malaysians and in Indonesians and all this, uh, in front of the Texan, the Texan, the mighty Texan. You know? <laughs> you know? uh, uh, he feels he's, that he's a giant. And you're little pygmies, you know? Come on. Uh, what, uh, what are you talking about? He's, in, he's, he's, he's disarmed. You know, he's a sitting duck before you. Wallah. Because that complex, Jalut. He got knocked out how? Same, that complex, his size is big, you know, it's great. I can squeeze you to death. Yes, yes, yes. But he falls target to a small stone. Crack his skull. Same, same, same. This Jalut. Same, same. Learn, learn how to talk. Oh. The Arab world needs you. Look, I don't know. There might be some brothers here, extremists, and I should be that. This guy is a traitor. You know, I'm trying to tell you to sell out. Sell out. No, no, no. No, my brothers and sisters. This is my stand from the very beginning. To me, it's an opportunity for talking. I want to talk. I want to go to Israel. I want to talk to the Jews. I said, your prophet Moses, the greatest man, in his last and final revelation, in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 18, verse 18, he says, That's his Hebrew. That's Hebrew. Navi Akim Lahim Mikariv Achaihim, Kamukhawe Natati, before they bury who is this prophet? In Arabic, it says, lahum min mithlaka, wa kalami fi famihi, bi kulli ma bihi. In the Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 16, it says, Hikko mamit takim wi kullu muhammadim zehdudi wi zehrei bainat Yerushalam. Who is this muhammadim? In your book, in the original Hebrew, muhammadim. Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 16. Talk to him. And to me, I want an opportunity to go and talk to him. And I want you all to talk to him. Talk to him, man. Give him that opportunity to reject and then let Allah do the job. You do your job, you deliver your message, and then 
if the guy is still resistant, then leave it to Allah. But talk, man, talk.